You know, Joe, every time has its similarities and differences, uh, but let's start with the Fed because there's good news and bad news there. Bad news, and we've talked about it, the four of us here over the last 12 or 18 months, is that they got behind the curve. And expectations are a big part of inflation. And if uh, people across the country start to expect higher prices and look for higher wages and it gets embedded, it's a big problem. So they fell behind. So that's the bad news. The good news is they've got it now. And you all were having this debate this morning as well. And, and clearly they understand. And part of this is the lesson of the 70s. You're just talking about Volcker and Burns. They've got it that this is the biggest priority and they've got to get it. So the rhetoric is clear. The moves are, are sizable. I think they probably stay at uh, 75 basis points uh, until they really start to feel they, they're bending the curve here. Um, but the risk uh, of a recession uh, and a harder landing, his, his uh, language has been clear in the last weeks and month or two. He's talking about uh, the higher and higher chance that it's going to be hard on the American people and the American economy. And part of that is because they got started late. So now, in yesterday, uh, last couple of days, he talks about demand destruction and interest rates being a blunt instrument. They are. So really, he's trying to slow it. He can't slow it in some places. It's hard for interest rates to, in the near term, affect food prices, energies largely outside their control. And they obviously, there's been some other factors there, the war. Um, but they got behind the curve. They know it. They know they need to solve this. Even if the cost is a, a downturn, recession, demand destruction, uh, a more difficult time in the economy, and they're going to stay with it. And I think they will see it through, and they need to see it through because that's the lesson of the 70s into the early 80s, the pain of not doing that, the, the word stagflation being the one that is, uh, is uh, most painful for most people. So uh, that's where we are from a macro standpoint, and that's why you're not going to see them blink here for a while. One of the things that we always talked about that we worried about staying at zero for so long is that when there is a slowdown, we don't have any powder. Uh, we, we can't we can't cut. So we got we got used to this zero interest rate and even negative interest rates around the world. So I don't think we need Volcker like rates to, to clamp down on on demand. What's the new uh, high interest? What's the new interest rate that would cause that would affect what Powell needs. It's not 21 and a half percent on the prime rate that that uh, that we saw. I, I, it's still single digits. You could do that at like five percent or six percent nowadays, couldn't you? Uh, and in the reality, Joe, is I don't think he's going to need to go there. Uh, no. They're going to continue to move aggressively on the short end. You know, we'll watch the longer end of the curve uh, for its interpretation of of how soon and whether that tips it into a recession. Uh, so it, it, it's a very different time in that sense, and, and rates will never, they won't be anywhere where close to that. But, Joe, keep in mind, there are some things, and you all talk about these as well, that he doesn't entirely control. Energy prices is largely, I mean, he can hurt the demand side, and, and, and that's, you know, by, by unemployment going up and people uh, sadly being able to afford less gasoline and, and less energy. But he can't really affect the supply side as much. Food prices, again, there's not a great connection between interest rates and food prices. The, the deglobalization trend, I mean, there's a lot uh, around the world that's kind of coming back to national boundaries. Supply chains remain choppy. Uh, you know, I think uh, yesterday the Boeing CEO said through 2023, supply chains would be challenging. So there's other factors outside his control that might actually be bumping up uh, inflationary pressure in a, in a near term. I think over time they go away. You know, I, I'm a, a medium term optimist about the American economy and the impact of technology on driving prices down and moving standards of living forward. But in the near term, he's, and this is what he, he's really saying this yesterday, he said uh, it's a blunt instrument. There's only so much within his control. Having said that, I agree with you. We're not going to see rates anywhere close to where they've been in the past. And on the short end, uh, the market's expecting him to cap out at around 3.5%. I don't see any reason why that won't actually be the case uh, as uh, they move aggressively here over the next three to six months.